What's up, YouTube? I'm friendly, I'm in someone's neighborhood, and I'm into comics and stuff. I'm your friendly neighborhood comic book dude. That is not a mirage. I've got posters again. So, as we used to do, like, comment, subscribe, and in those comments, throw a number. What I do is, before the next video, throw those numbers into a generator, and I give away the poster based on who you know, get selected. And hey, uh, we aren't a super big channel yet, so the pool of people entering these poster giveaways is still relatively small. Um, so, let's get going, though. The first piece I got for you today is a lovely throwback to the 90s, circa 1996. In fact, I would have been seven years old. I did not buy this figure. I bought... Another figure on the back of this figure, um, I don't want to say Toys R Us, um, and I was eyeballing this one, and I, I, I'm I'm sort of reluctant to sell it at this point. Not that you know it's it's not mine, but you know I could purchase it, obviously. Uh, but I had my moment with it. I looked at it. I I enjoyed it, and I said, mm, "Well, we'll always we'll always have Toys R Us, right?" That is the lovely. Iron Man from Toy Biz. Um, this particular Iron Man is actually the Inferno armor. Because if you remember the lovely 90s cartoon, this Iron Man went hand in hand with, there was like an entire wall of armors. And I mean, you know, it, it probably was to the level that Iron Man 3 was when he like sent them all on like drone mode. But yeah, there were there were tons of armors, you know, underwater armor, fire armor, earth armor. They did a bunch. It, it suffice it to say. Um... I, I was a really big fan of this design. I got I got even bigger chills when they uh they did like a mini crossover between this and Spider Man. They had him and War Machine in a handful of episodes between them. Um just super cool. Um monetarily this guy isn't a whole heck of a lot. Um it's it's almost like um inflation um or adjustment for time. Um just made this guy about the price of what a a figure would be nowadays, because um, I think we're gonna throw him up up at about twenty five bucks. Um, I, I I feel like this could be a lot more. Um, I don't know if it's just uh, nobody's feeling the magma armor <laughs> or what. Um, I I did actually see in my travels for this uh, there was an Inferno armor for one of the Iron Man movie uh, figures, so maybe people are like, no, I want the Legends quality one more. That this one is poop. Well, guess what? Anybody who calls this poop, your poop. All right. So about 25 on that guy, though. Um, the range on that was relatively small. It was like the low was 17, the high was like 37. So right there in the middle. Um, next we have... Yep, Aliens Fall from the Sky in my home. Uh, we have an Alien 3 NECA. Uh, yep, that 3, it's like hiding right there, but it's there. Um, this is one of the Ultimate Edition figures. Um, I actually believe that this is supposed to be the dog figure. The lighting is not that great. Really wish I was free in the daytime so you guys could get that natural sunlight going. But, yep, it's an Ultimate Alien uh, 3 figure. Um, it's relatively new. Um, this one was also going to go for about 25 This is another one where, like, um, I don't know if this is still out in the wild now, if you could find this at, like, Target or something. Um, not that anybody should be traversing Target for NECAs, but they are. Um, but this one was, again, similar, like, the low was, uh, like, 11, but for, like, a loose one, and, like, the high was 40 for the same sealed figure, so we are 25 in this, boy. This is gonna be, it's gonna be the sweet spot today for stuff, um, one of the reasons, too, this week, uh, we're definitely late, it's, it's, Feels like I'm getting later and later every week, and I'm I'm cognizant of it. But um, one of the actual real holdups, other than just life, was um, I've spent all week trying to find um information on one of the items today, and and when we get to it, I'll feel free to showcase it, and uh, you know if anybody's got info on it, which I doubt. I mean, it's I don't think the item is super old, but it's just old enough that I can't find anything recently about it, but it's still relatively new because company hasn't been producing figures like this for ages and ages 
But um, we'll get to that. But that was like really the big holdup because I, you know, for anybody that doesn't know, I do actually take time and I research these prices. Um, you know, when it when it arises, you know, when we've got like a new company to talk about, you know, I, I look those up too. So um, so that stuff takes time. And uh, uh, truthfully, you know, I, I want to have like accurate information. So I don't want to like half ass it and be like, eh, I couldn't find a price. Let me just make up one. No, I really try to look. So but next. Yeah, and also week after week, I'm just, I'm um, subconsciously taking more and more stuff that at the time as I like throw these things into boxes and I, I load them into my vehicle, it doesn't seem like a lot, especially because I have a new car, so like I don't have a full concept of how much this car can hold versus my old car. Um, but yeah, more and more stuff, so more stuff to profile, more stuff to clean, uh, to take pictures of, that sort of thing. Um... This was kind of cool. I actually thought that this item would be worth more. Um, so for anybody that's not familiar, there's a company called WizKids. And, um, you know, if the name sounds familiar, it's because that they, they're they most commonly known for Heroclix. A uh, game for, like, little tiny miniatures of mostly, I think, exclusively uh, licensed material. I can't think of a time I've ever seen a Heroclix that wasn't based on something. Like, the whole premise is it's... It's like a trading card game, but you get figures inside the boxes instead of cards. Um, actually, no, you do. Get, you think you get cards too, uh, at least when you're buying like the booster booster packs. Um, but it's a game. Um, some people collect them for the game pieces, some don't. Um, and I think I think I guess it would depend on how rare the pieces were to drive up the, the cost of this item. But um, what they did sometimes too is um, rather than like force you to hunt down all the pieces, you could buy like a pack that would come with like all the major pieces from a given set. You know, there might be an Uncanny X-Men set, but here's, like, a five-pack that's got, like, the main five X-Men, whatever the case may be. So there was, there there were horror clicks. Horror. <laughs> I've never seen one, to be honest. And I've been selling hero clicks at my retail job for eight years. I've never seen a horror-based hero click. I've seen Marvel, I've seen DC, I've seen, like, TMNT. I've never seen these. So these were clearly before my time as a, as a retail seller of hero clicks. But right here, we've got a Freddy vs. Jason mini box set of Hero Clicks, and it comes with seven figures. You probably can't tell because of the, the glare. But we got Jason, we got Freddy, we've got like. Oh, that's actually like a double. That's a Jason and a Freddy standing back to back. We got two more Jasons, we got like a, a Freddy monster, we got a Freddy like crouching, and there's a. Um, what is that? There's a grave over there. There's also, um, like, a furnace. It's, like, a bunch of stuff you can make, like, a little mini diorama. In fact, you could even just keep it as is because there's a lot of cool backgrounds in there. But, um, this this thing, I, the prices are super low. Uh, so, I mean, 20. 20 is what this is going to go for. I don't know if this is rare. Um, maybe the people that were selling it also didn't know what they had their hands on. Maybe there's some Heroclix person out there who's going to, like, see this and go, Yes! 20 bucks for that stuff. You're, you're dumb, comic book dude. Well, guess what? You're lucky because you're just paying 20 bucks for it. So, there be that. Uh, what else? You uh, can... Yeah. Where is that? Uh, let's put that over there. Hmm. Ooh, I like this guy. Um, so... I've started to sort of, like, create patterns in my own mind, too. Like, week after week, I go over certain things, whether it be because I know I have particular people I've made connections with that are interested in items, or just for continuity's sake, because week after week, I get this thing from this series, and it, it moves. So there there's interest for these things out there. This guy uh, gave me some particular interest because um, I'm a big fan of the Arrowverse and the Arrowverse shows. I was a big fan of the, the Crisis on Infinite Earths. Um, and to... My my great happiness, they included uh, one of the best, one of the best, I'm, I don't want to get flamed out there by anybody, um, one of the best Superman in comicdom, Kingdom Come Superman, played by our one and only Brandon Routh. Um, he, you know, they slapped some gray on the side of his head, and he, he did good, but, man, just looking at this Alex Ross design of the guy, oh. Sorry, Brandon Routh, you just, you're not this guy. Uh, nice little inside shot for you guys. This is part of those 
DC Direct one sixth figures. Um, this guy is going right for a hundred. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. He's he's beautiful. He's new. There's no reason to undersell the guy. And I mean, most of these guys that that I've gotten from week over week have gone somewhere between fifty and a hundred. Uh, Zatanna finally shipped out a, uh, like a week or so ago. She went for a hundred. Um, Earth Two Flash was like sixty five. I got Wonder Woman right now on eBay, and she's up to about 60. Um, so, yep. Uh, so there's that. This next piece, uh, I'm, I'm having a little bit of deja vu on. I, I, I tried to review some of my own my own content to see if I could see it. And, um, you know, I, I, I mark all the prices and the research and stuff, but silly me, I don't always mark the dates. So um, I got this piece, and to be fair... Um, my, my friend Frank, who all of these items belonged to, um, was not averse to having doubles. He had zero issue with it. Like, he didn't intentionally go out of his way to get them. Once in a while he did. Sometimes he wanted to have two of something. But other times he, he you know, he was an older gentleman and he, he forgot. And sometimes he would buy doubles of things. So, so, so don't be surprised if you ever see a double of something. It is, is entirely possible. There are some things, too, that I know there are doubles of that have avoided... I've avoided getting because I don't want to uh, inundate you guys with like the same thing right away. You know, if we're doing this for a couple of years and down the line I come across one of the doubles again and put it up, then it'll feel like a brand new thing and it'll be fun for everybody. Um, jabbering aside though, it's a lovely Frankenstein 112. So the big difference between this lovely Mezco piece and the last one we sold, I believe, I don't remember. I'm pretty sure, though, the last one we had was the standard, which is black and white. And I, I know it's probably hard to tell because this guy is still beautifully sealed in his package. But uh, this version is green. And it's got a little previews exclusive logo on it. So um, my research says that that is the previews version, which would have been like the catalog that you order from, from your comic book store, was a color. So deja vu, but sort of like alternate reality deja vu. Um... PX exclusive Frankenstein is gonna go for about eighty bucks. Uh, right in the right in about the middle there. The low was fifty three. The high was like hundred and ten. So right right sitting in the middle there. Still sealed for any fans of this piece. You can be the one to open it. Um, oh, this piece was cool. Uh, I've actually got one guy who probably, I feel like I should have shown this to him first, but I, the thought's only coming to me now as we're, we're doing this video, and some people have a particular affinity for the um, Jason from the early Friday the 13th movies, like when he had like the bag on his head, or like the deformed face from like being like neglected, for lack of a better word. Uh, maliciously by his counselors. Um, and um, we've had a couple of these box sets come through, but um, this is a this is a Friday the 13th uh, part 2, I believe. No, this is original, actually. Friday the 13th, 25th anniversary box set. And it's got the mother right about there. It's got Jason. It's lovely diorama pieces. Um... Yeah, this thing's beautiful. Um, and the, the the price to match to boot. Um, also got tons of little accessories in there. He's got a swappable head to go from bag head to you know messed up head. Um, cool pieces to like build your own little diorama. Um, yeah, this thing's beautiful. It's a it's a NECA real toy. Um, great for any fan of of Friday the Thirteenth. Um, the range on this one was kind of high. This is probably one of the one of the higher priced items today. I would I would think. Um, the low was seventy five, and I believe that was on an open one. Uh, the high for new went as high as two hundred and thirty. Uh, I think we settled on one hundred and fifty for this. Um, as always, you know, if you're buying like multiple things, um, continuing business, that sort of thing. I'm sure we can work out uh, um, different prices. I like to think that we're not very rigid. Um, 
So there is that. Um, next. Um, another figure in a series that we've had a couple of so far. Um, this is the Diamond Select Toys series of Universal Monsters, and they're like cloth figures in their in the sense of their clothing at the very least. And this is our boy, the Phantom of the Opera. And it's not the only Phantom of the Opera we got going on today. But um, time and time again, I'm I'm seeing that these Diamond Select uh, figures just don't go for that much. I don't know if it's because they. I mean, like this guy looks pretty spot on. I, I have literally no complaints about this. Uh, the plastic aspects of him look great. Um, I don't know if it's just there's better, even better quality figures out there. I don't know if it's because it was diamonds, so it was mass produced. There's more of them in the world. Hard to say. Um, this guy's gonna go for twenty five bucks. Um, probably a little higher than the Dracula, but again, still, that's pretty low, all things considered. I don't know what, what these kind of things would retail for, probably in the 20 range, so maybe it went up a little. Um, oof, next, I love these. Where the heck did I put these? Oh, they're like right in front of my face. Um, in our continuing eventual hunt for sideshow statues... Um, I continue to bring you guys Sideshow figures, be they, you know, big 12 inches or these beautiful action figures. Right there. It's Bride of Frankenstein. Um, for any of you, you know, hardcore, you know, cardboard collectors, the thing is completely in the box. It's beautiful, never been opened. Um, but there is a bend up here in the corner. Um, doesn't affect the ability to hang the item, but, you know, some people are, are sticklers for that. Uh, just figured, you know, full disclosure as always. Uh, she's not that high uh, relative to some of these guys. She's thirty bucks, um, uh, which is less than our other one. Uh, I gotta find him, but yeah. So beautiful pieces though. These sideshows. Ooh, you can even swap her head to make her like fully bandaged, so then you don't quite know is this Frankenstein's wife or is this. Bride of the Mummy. Uh, let's see. Next. Little interlude from our sideshow friends, because I have one more of those. This beautiful piece. Oof. This is the thing. Like, as in the John Carpenter's thing. The giant Cthulhu monster-looking thing with, uh... A matching John Carpenter thing post movie poster stand up in the back uh, to like house this guy in front of so you know like what he's a monster from. Um, in particular, this is the uh, where does it say it? This is the Blair monster, um, and this is a McFarlane uh, from their movie Maniacs series uh, from 1999. Um, so a lot of times these McFarlanes uh, aren't that pricey. I mean, we we had um. We have we had like the crow. He was like twenty bucks, twenty five bucks. Um, the range on this was, you know, a little surprising. Um, I'm, I mean, I'm a fan of this movie, but I'm, you know, maybe maybe it's because there's not like as much out there for the the the, the thing. Um, the range was between fifteen and ninety. Ninety was a brand like the highest for brand new, and fifteen was like the low, loose that I could see. So, um, and. Um, I, I've spoken to some people about that, and in a way, I almost feel like that, that helps helps buyers out there a little bit more. Um, some of our earlier auctions, I didn't include loose, I didn't include pre-owned um, in the factoring of the average of these items. And then I started to think about it, and I said, well, why not? Um, because the used are going to tend to be lower prices. Averaging a lower with an averaging a higher is going to make a better, um, a more closely... Uh, how do I put it? Uh, a better average price for the consumer. Because if I have the $90 and then the $70, 80 bucks would be our asking price. $15 low and 90 high. Asking price is 50 bucks. So, sealed, beautiful. Um, not much to say about the thing other than it's a great looking thing. Uh, oh, man. What, do we, what else we got? Um... Oh, we're going to continue our interlude from Sideshow. Um, 
for any of you fans of that Jason that we were looking at in the box a few minutes ago, but you're like, eh, I want a Jason like that, but I don't, I don't want to shell out 150 bucks for the box. Well, it's your lucky day, because I've got the cloth version of that figure from NECA for the Part 2 film, but he looks the same as he did in that, because it's like, you know, it's Part 2, so it takes the guy from the end of the first one into the second one, because any diehard Friday the 13th fan will tell you, he was not the killer in the first one. His mother was, or the counselors were, depending on what the who we're talking about, are were killers. Um, this guy, woof, he's a he's a pricey one too. Um, he might be a, he might be harder to come by. He might be a little older. Uh, I have noticed some of these cloth ones are a little bit more. Um, he's gonna be fifty five. Yeah, but that's still not one hundred and fifty, which I suppose if you took the fact that there are two figures in there and then took one and then the other, splitting that in half would be at 75, so still a little bit of a better deal. I'm not I'm not entirely sure which are better quality, the cloth or the not cloth. It may just be personal preference, because uh, they're all mecha either way. But yeah. There is that boy. Okay, our interlude from Side Show is over. I have found the other one. Uh, when I said that we aren't done with Phantom of the Opera, I meant it. We have Phantom of the Opera Series 2 from Sideshow, Universal Monsters. Um, God, I love these guys. He's got a little bass and everything. You can see his like, evil, maniacal smile. They've even got the switch head where he like, sort of looks like a normal dude instead of like a, a creep. Um... Actually, he's another low one. Uh, would we have Brad at? Brad was at 30 this week. This guy's also 30. So, I mean, kind of a steal week if you're into these sideshow action figures. Um, ooh, time to get into the bigger stuff. Uh, all right. Let's see. Can you guys hear this? That is the sound of the Mezco Mega Scale Friday the 13th, just the first film. Jason, uh, these clock in at about 15 inches. Uh, the box is a little dinged up. Um, like on the sides, there's some like crease marks and stuff uh, on either side of it. Uh, seal's intact. The guy's never been taken out of his box. He's still making his sound as evidenced. Eh, come on, do it, make it. So, uh, what did this guy go for? So he went for between 45 and 100 So I believe we are looking at 70 bucks for this guy. Um, he's new-ish. Looks like he came out in early 2018. Um, I think it would be at the point where you're probably not going to see this guy on the shelf anymore. Maybe, possibly... Um, I would think this is the type of thing that, like, if it came out in 2018, probably would have been clean, clearanced out by the Christmas of 20, 2018 or, like, tax time early 2019. But, yeah, I mean, you know, retail on this was probably, like, 100 so 70 is not bad. One more for the road. All right, what else do we got? Um, ooh, I love this next part. So, a little, little, um, little double trouble going on next. Can you, my friends, spot the two Texas Chainsaw Massacre side Joe figures we've got? Slightly different, though. Which is which? Which one looks like it could be menacing, and which one looks like he's menaced? Well, the devil on my left shoulder is from the original Texas Chainsaw Massacre. There, ready to play with his chainsaw. And, you know, who wants to just have one? Gotta go with two. Our boy from the remake... Um, 
little grittier looking in the body in Chainsaw. His face is kind of kind of weird. I mean, I guess, you know, it's supposed to be, but... Um, these two guys are both, you know, around the 100 range. Um, one is definitely more than the other, though. Um, we've got the original gonna be going for 90 his range was like 70 to 120 um I, this actually shocked me a little bit the remake is worth more um his range was 85 to 200 um so we've got him clocked at 140 um i don't know why i often speculate on what i think the reasons are behind like some of these newer things kind of like um with that neck of scream uh cloth figure from a couple weeks ago uh, it's from Scream 4, though, at which point people are sitting there probably like, I've got Scream 1, 2, and 3, I don't need 4, until some time passes and they're like, crap, I kind of want that fourth one, and it's not out there anymore. And then you get a, a cloth NECA figure going for 100 bucks, A 7-inch cloth NECA figure, for that matter. Um, so yeah, I don't know if it was just a question of, I've already got the original Leatherface, and then over time, some time passed, and you know people are like, mm, I kind of want that other one. Guess what? He ain't there anymore. So that probably is the answer to that. I, I couldn't tell you 100%, but uh, what do we got next? Um, I've been posting the Living Dead dolls in probably a few weeks, two weeks, three weeks, something like that, because um, they usually come and go right away. Um, this one, though, my my Living Dead lady has already. Um, so, you know, so one person's I don't need is another person's I need. This is the lovely Tim Curry Pennywise from the original It miniseries, not movie. Beautiful piece, you know, especially if you're uh, not a lover of clowns, because he'll scare the bejeebus out of you. You, know, you can even see his serrated teeth and beady eyes, you know, that's, you know, strikes fear in the hearts of, uh, you know, men. Uh, this guy's going to go for 45 Um, right there, somewhere between 30 and 60, so easy peasy. Figure it out, squeezy. Hmm, I think we're coming to, coming, getting close to the end. Um, 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 where did she go? Oh, one second. The next one is sort of like a, a two-parter, kind of in the way that our Texas Chainsaw was. Um, in the sense that, you know, I mean, they're from the same property. Um, first, we got another 15-inch Mega Scale Mezco figure. This is our girl Regan here. Um, this is another one that I can't remember if we've already sold. Like, I've... Uh, we definitely had a bigger Regan. I don't know if she was like this or if she was just a Regan, but... Um, this one makes sound, too, if I can find her sweet spot. I can't find her sweet spot. It's, like, hidden behind hair or something. But she's supposed to make sound, I swear. <laughs> um, come on. Now I really just want to... There we go. Did you guys hear it? Let's try it again. Get her mouth move. I can't see. Beautiful piece though. Um, definitely like Regan in that face totally. Um, oh, yeah, this one. I remember this now. Um, so she's got a nice big old ding on the side there. This one's like, you know, crack on the side of the box bad. Um, you know. Figure's still intact herself. She's never been taken out. Seal is still intact. But, you know, things like that are are very noticeable. Um, her range was between 60 and 85. Um, I don't feel like in good conscience when there's, like, a punch in the side of a box, I can even reliably sell it between an average like that. Um, so I think we're going to ask 50 bucks for this. Um, as always, you know, you folks out there that are just going to crack her open anyway or sitting in your chairs right now going like yeah yeah just keep finding those punch boxes get them deals to you folks i say thank you for your business um so the companion piece to that but not like in the strictest sense is um i thought this was actually pretty cool monetarily it's not that but 
Um, so, this was a collector's edition, or special edition, box set of the original Exorcist movie. Um, I don't know that this has ever been opened, opened, um, so I guess we're doing that right now. Oh my god, this is an unboxing. I swore that these would be reboxes. So, this has got a, like a little art book. It's got a sealed sealed uh, picture from the film in a cell. It's got the, um, what did they call these things? These were like uh, lobby cards uh, for the movie. Um, and then a bunch of other stuff in here. There's a, oh, soundtrack is still in there sealed. The movie is still sealed. So I would feel fairly confident in calling this a new copy. Um, yeah, you know, the box has been opened, but semantics, like, probably just to actually see what the contents were. Um, cause it's a nondescript box, like, you don't even know what's in it. So, uh, but because it's a VHS, um, and feel free to correct me on this, you know, I've done a little bit of research on this, um, on my own, even not related to my, uh, comic book duding. Um, my understanding with VHSs is, is in order to put the film on the tape, um, the tape itself is magnetized, um, with the, the content. Um, but the magnet, the magnetizing process isn't intended to last forever. Um, so films that were put on VHS in, you know, the seventies, eighties, in theory may, you know, maybe on VHSs that aren't working anymore. Uh, I, I can't confirm that with any kind of, you know, scientific information. Uh, maybe somebody who's got more information on VHSs can say, um, I think part of the thing that would back that up though is the shift to things of more of like a digital nature dvd blu-ray 4k you know they're a hundred times more rewatchable on on a disc like that you know the the information is just all digital so um that being said i wonder if that went into at all the um the the what this item is selling for um i also don't think i saw a single new copy so i think this is another one of those instances where you where someone's going to benefit from the um benefit from the used copy prices um i saw the low was about 20 and the high was about 50 so we're gonna go with 35 and we're we're gonna not argue about that price because again everybody else like claimed that theirs were used so, you know, you guys just saw that sealed cell, sealed stuff. You know what I mean? The box itself has been opened, but the contents are all all new. You, you can even call it new other. So, uh, there is that. Um, we As we draw to a close, what do we have left? Uh, blah, 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 blah. Got, still got five items. Okay. Um, this next one, I... I, I kind of am not really sure of the rationale behind this versus just getting the poster itself, but um, there apparently is a set, because I, I would imagine there are more of these. This is uh, for A New Hope, so there are others out there, I would imagine. Um, this is a <coughs> movie poster collectible sculpture. So it's a sculpture of the movie poster. Self-explanatory, yeah. Um, don't see any limited numbers on this thing. Actual poster artwork there on the side for compare. Um, you can like prop it up on like a desk or something. It's got, got a kickstand that's like a like a picture frame. Um, thing's pretty cool. Uh, when did this come out? Two thousand five. Okay, you know. Interest in Star Wars was spotty at the time because of the new film, so they were like, alright, let's lean back on the oldies, get some money out of those. Um, I don't think I really found much on this guy. Uh, it's going to be $40, guys. I uh, don't know. I don't know if that's a steal or a, or a steal. <laughs> uh, yeah. Who Hope Style D. Oh, there were multiple styles, too. I was going to say, this didn't look like the New Hope poster. Um, that leads me to believe that we're going to find more of these, because uh, my friend Frank there was a big Star Wars person, so 
he most likely would not have settled for just Style D. He probably would have gotten all the styles of each poster. So, uh, Style D, unfortunately, I couldn't find anything more than 40 bucks, so 40 bucks it be. Um. Next, we have a series of hardcovers, as we sometimes do. Um. Cool little shout-out about this. I mean... I've ran this by a bunch of my own friends, and we put this out on social media, and I'm pretty sure. So a handful of the, the hardcovers I've gotten are what they call the DM variants. So what this means is direct market, because the same hardcovers you can buy at the comic book store, you know, they also sell at Barnes & Noble or, you know, Amazon or whatever the case may be. So they wanted to still differentiate the comic book stores from the... Other retailers make them say, hey, hey, you know, we love you guys. We loved you guys first. So the direct market variants tend to be covers that are uh, reprints of one of the books that are inside the collection versus um, the non-DM variants might have been homage covers or covers designed entirely for the book, like brand new, new artwork, which on the one hand is cool, but on the other hand, some people just want that, you know, representation of the original stuff. Um, so, yeah. But we've got some... I've got three hardcovers this week. I've got Green Lantern Silver Age hardcover. This bad boy retailed for, wow, 125 You're going to get it for less than half. Uh, this is 60 bucks. Yeah. Uh, no fuss, no muss, no... Nothing like that. Some great, uh, you know... Green Lantern stories, we get some Sinestro, we get some Alan Scott, uh, just good old-fashioned Green Lantern, I guess, featuring tales from lots of great people. But yeah, 60 bucks. Uh, I don't know if this has been printed in multiple other fashions. Couldn't tell you why I found it for such a low price. I just did. Um, so there's that. Uh, next. Um, oh, we were. I was kind of starting to explain to you guys. Uh, so the, the variants, um, sort of attracted, uh, what I believe to be a celebrity. Um, he, he told me that he was him, um, when I asked him on eBay and, uh, no disrespect to, to you if you see this, you know, obviously, uh, uh, maybe, uh, an Instagram post where you're holding those DM variants would, you know, make me plots and be like, oh my God, it's true. But, um. We had uh, Avengers Volume 1 hardcover and Volume 2 hardcovers, and they were both the DM variants, which um, are a little harder to come by in the sense that you can only get them through the comic book stores. Um, the other ones are a little easier to come by because they're, you know, you could get them at the comic book store, at Amazon, at Barnes & Noble, wherever, uh, sold omnibuses. Um, but on my eBay, uh, because these items didn't sell on, on Facebook, um, I, they went on eBay, and twice in a row, Avengers Volume 1 and Volume 2, um, DM variants sold to Gerard Way, the lead singer of My Chemical Romance. Um, I hope he enjoys them. Um, but, yeah, that just kind of shows you that some of these things are really just are hard to come by. You know, they were both over $200, um, which, again, is a drop in the bucket compared to the content within them. Um... But yeah, so we've got Avengers Volume 3. Uh, again, in case he's watching, or anybody needs this. Um, this one's a little easier to come by, though. This one's only going to run about 80 bucks. Um, well, not easier to come by. Um, it's... The issues in it are later issues. They're like the 90... What is it? It's 90... 59 to 88. And then a couple of crossover issues from other books. Um... It's not that they're not valuable or not good or anything like that. Um, they're just later along. So, um, you know, some of those other ones are shoot way up because they've got tons of first appearances in them. Um, so as the book is later and later, less first appearances because, you know, they already appeared. <laughs> um, but, yeah, um, this actually, I believe, collects the first appearance of Red Wolf in it. You can see him on the cover, too. Um, but uh, this is going to run about 80 bucks. Uh, the cover price on it was 100 so a little bit of a break there. And the last one. I actually was noticeably surprised on this one. I thought this one would be more, um, but it's just not. Uh, I don't know if it's just been reprinted in other formats or what. Uh, we're going to get 90 bucks for this guy. 
But um, this is Giant Size X-Men, um, also to be referred to as Uncanny X-Men Volume 1 DM variant. Some of the best, or at least the start of some of the best X-Men stories uh, of all time with uh, Chris Claremont, uh, John Byrne, uh, who else do we Oh yeah, Dave Cockrum. Great, great stuff. A backbone for a lot of uh, a lot of the lead up to uh, Phoenix. Uh, we get the introduction of like uh, Rogue from that team. Well, actually, yeah, she was introduced into the team. She didn't appear first in X Men, but um, you know, we got the introduction of lots of new X Men onto the team. Like literally, giant size is what you know kind of refreshed the the X books um, because the original X Men had gone missing on Krakoa. So Scott got away, and he had to like assemble a new team to go hunt them down and get them home. Um, this, yeah, but like I said, this is only gonna get you about ninety bucks uh, for this. Uh, retailed for a hundred, uh, so you get a little bit of a break on this. Uh, I'm not sure why. Again, I don't know if this has been reprinted in multiple other formats uh, to make it less uh, scarce. Because I mean, Giant Size X Men's a pricey book. You know, it's I don't have one. I'd love to have one, um, but. Um, you know, the kind of thing that's driven some of these hardcover sales is based on the first appearances. I mean, there's a lot of first appearances in this, so uh, I guess enjoy if you are the one who buys this. Um, Our last item to share today, I believe, I believe that's our last item. Yeah. Um, This is going to be a first. We're on week 12 here, right? Um, There are some items that I've had a hard time pricing over others. I legitimately don't know what I'm going to price this at. I may, I haven't, I haven't fully committed to this yet, but I may do a reply auction for this item. Uh, I'm not sure. Um, this comes from our friends at the Bradford Exchange, um, such makers of things like our Alien Clock from our earlier adventures, or um, I haven't come across. I don't think I've, I don't think we've had any other Bradford. Ex- we had a. Uh, R2-D2 Snow Globe. That was Bradford Exchange. Um, so this is a figure. Um, Bradford Exchange did a handful of... You know, they still kind of do them. There's a handful of figures. Um, I don't know really what to call them or compare them against. Um, they feel like Tonner quality. Um, I couldn't say that with 100% certainty. Um, but, you know, they're definitely like that size, that shape. Um... So this guy, you can't really see him because he's, you know, he's still brand new. He's all sealed up. Uh, I don't know if you can take a guess from, like, his outfit, but um, this is a Caesar Romero Joker figure from Bradford Exchange. Um, I could not find a single sold listing, uh, asked listing, uh, record of him on Bradford Exchange. Uh, nobody seems to know anything about this guy. Um, I don't know if he's just that unpopular, or if he's so popular he's only whispered. Um, I I legitimately don't know. Um, I have thoughts on generic prices for something like this, but I don't like to deal in generic. I like to deal in information that I can reliably say this is what this should go for. Um, but yeah, so uh, this is probably going to be the only item you don't see a price for on this week's stuff because. I um, as I contemplate, uh, you know, maybe, maybe I'll add his picture to the listing too and, you know, allow people to make offers on him. I don't know. Uh, I think, I think even if I were to set that thing on eBay, I don't think I could set it with less than like a hundred dollar reserve, um, truthfully. So something like that, uh, Bradford Exchange is not known for having pieces like that for like less than 150 to 200 dollars uh from what i've seen in the past so that's it guys um you know by the time we're all said and done it, i don't feel like i showed you guys that much but then when i look at the clock and i see that we've been sitting here chatting for 44 minutes and 13 14 <laughs> um yeah um but let's see as always like comment subscribe like i said do that lovely jazz for that beautiful symbiote spider-man uh is that is it alien reality no it's just regular symbiote spider-man uh poster um uh if you've got any questions feel free to uh reach out um and there's a facebook group that i created specifically for the selling of these items um 
not that I won't be posting in other Facebook groups, but um, it's sort of a, I, I've pointed this out once before, um, it's a, a venue similar to like Patreon to give people sort of uh, exclusive access to these things, you know, not get bogged down by the minutia of other people's group postings. Also, so I'm not infringing on other groups' uh, rules because I'll be honest, you know, maybe I'll, I'm one of the only people to say this, but I don't always have time to sit there and read all the rules. Yes, that is my responsibility as somebody who's accepting a group uh, invitation or uh, or group request, but um, I'm human. I make mistakes. I'm, I've listed things in groups and then realized that I didn't, you know, meet all the proper criterion or, or didn't list something right exactly the right way. So at the very least, in my own group, I can be pretty hassle-free. It's not just for me as well. Anybody who'd like to maybe post things uh, in the same vein as what you see from me, I'm totally fine with that. I named it a marketplace for that reason. So, um, yeah. But until next time, which should be very shortly, considering the time of the week that we are in, I've been your host, your friendly neighborhood comic dude. Catch you guys next time.